The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After Jesus had been born at Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod, some wise men came to Jerusalem from the east. Where is the infant king of the Jews? They asked. We saw his star as it rose and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was perturbed, and so was the whole of Jerusalem. And he called together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. At Bethlehem in Judea, they told him, for that is what the prophet wrote, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means least amongst the leaders of Judah, for out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men to see him privately. He asked them the exact date on which the star had appeared and sent them on to Bethlehem. Go and find out all about the child, he said, and when you have found him, let me know so that I may go and do him homage. And having listened to what the king had to say, they set out. And there in front of them was the star they had seen rising and it went forward and halted over the place where the child was. And the sight of the star filled them with delight. And going into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and falling on their faces, they did him homage. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. But they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod and return to their own country by a different way. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Lovely feast, the Epiphany, because it uh, is the feast celebrated right through history in the early church of uh, the faith in Jesus coming to the Gentiles. If you've got a, a different version of Ephesians that we read today, we read that the, the pagans now share the inheritance. It would be better to read Probably the Gentiles now share that inheritance because pagans have connotations, don't they? And, and it was uh, unknown to any men in that past generation that certainly should be inclusive of the ladies. Um, updating <laughs> translations is going on all the time as meanings change in words. But it's was celebrated in the early church because the Greeks and the Russian Orthodox Church or the Orthodox have this as the big feast of, of Christmas Day. More important than the birth of Jesus because the Jesus is reaching out to, the, to uh, all the nations of the earth. Uh, there are no three kings at the crib. Uh, if you've got kings in the crib, they shouldn't be there. They should be wise men, all right? Uh, <laughs> I, uh, the kings come from the psalm that we read, the, that we sang so beautifully this morning. All right, wow, that's a breakthrough. Uh, very pleased with that. It might happen more often, <clears throat> uh, but in the, we sang about the kings of Tarshish and the kings of Sheba and the kings of, of, of Seba bringing gifts before the king. Um, I like to uh, take the hidden life of Jesus, if I can, this morning and take it apart because next Sunday is the baptism of the Lord. He's already grown up. Right? We've only got a week. We've only got a week to do it. Last Sunday he was... Uh, Last Sunday he was presented in the temple, so we're sort of going backwards now to the... To, we're trying to fit 30 years into, into the 12 days of Christmas, and it's not easy um, for a preacher. But uh, I heard uh, a, a great reflection on this, you know, and uh, it is a reflection, so it's made up, totally made up, maybe. <laughs> uh, but as we reflect in prayer, we know very little about the hidden life. Right? From, from uh, the f ten words, is it? He went back to Nazareth and he was subject to them. You know? That covered the light. And then we appear him at, he appears at the, at the losing in the, finding and losing in the temple, you know, which was obviously for his bar mitzvah when he was brought to Jerusalem. And obviously, uh, after his bar mitzvah, he joins the boys, right? And it was obviously Joseph's fault that he got lost. Uh, <laughs> because he wasn't with the girls anymore, because he was with the boys, all right? 
Uh, and uh, I often feel for Joseph. He never seemed to get too many things right, did he? But he was always in the plan of God. You know, it says he was a just man. The just man means he always did what God wanted him to do. And uh, he's a great fan of mine. So let's just reflect on, on the gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Now, if you look up in the dictionary, you find out they were very, very expensive gifts. And uh, you've all got wedding gifts or baptismal gifts or party gifts or, and you hide them in special places, you know, and you put them away, mothers especially. And I can imagine in this reflection, and just let me be a poet for today, all right? Four-year-old Jesus running around in Nazareth and finds his mother's treasure chest like any four-year-old decent kid would. By that age, he would have found where mum had everything hidden. I remember saying to my mother once, I found the chocolate biscuits. And my mother said they weren't lost. <laughs> <laughs> they were in, in the frying pan, you know, the electric <laughs> frying pan where she thought no one would ever look here. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so I can imagine little Jesus at four years of age finding two, two bowls of perfume in his mother's little hidey hole, one of frankincense and one of myrrh. And I can imagine his saying, what were those things? What were they? And his mother explaining to him the visit I think it says that the, the wise men came to his house, so we're not in the crib anymore. We're back maybe in Nazareth, all right? And she would have told him in great detail. She treasured and pondered all these things, the scripture said, when the wise men came and how they gave these very precious gifts and how it was a symbol to her that confirmation of the angel's words that he was to be the king uh, she never had that prophecies ever fulfilled till after the resurrection, did she? She was the woman of faith who believed and treasured and pondered all these things and believed every word from the Lord would be fulfilled. And when they came to visit, they said they adored him. They went down, I read on their faces, I made a mistake, and they went down on their knees and ad adored him. To adore is to put your hand to your lips to add to put your hands they worshipped him as they, they worshipped him as a king as a divine king as the lord king you know we've got a the reason why i'm going into this today is to try and help you understand that the, the jesus is truly god and truly man and you know how much did he know how much did he know uh, when he went to second class, let's get really into it, you know, did he go to second class or not, it doesn't matter. He only was in second class and he had to learn twice times tables. Yeah, and he made the world. Uh, how much did he know of, in second class of twice times tables? Um, did he know it all or did he have to learn it? I, I want to tease you like this all the, And you can believe whatever you like as long as you believe he's truly God and truly man. My professor in the seminary taught us that when Jesus was in the crib, when he went to sleep, he spent all the time adoring the beatific, beatific, beatific vision. Well, I can assure you when I was in the crib, I didn't do that. And the, Paul says somewhere that he was like us in all things except sin. You know, did he have to learn? Of course, he grew in wisdom and age and grace before God. And man, it's a great mystery. Reminds me of the bishop will be light today, will be light today, coming for confirmation. I told you this before, but it's my favourite joke. <laughs> coming for confirmation, examining the kids, a rather pompous bishop, you know, my turn, walked into the classroom with sisters there with fourth class, and they're all scared. Sisters more scared than the kids, of course, we didn't know that. And the bishop picks on the little boy in the front, and he said, What is the Trinity? And the boy had a very bad stutter. He had three to one the earth and one God. And the bishop turned to sister and said, I don't understand. The boy said, you're not meant to understand, it's a mystery. <laughs> 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 the 
the second reading was all about the mystery, Ephesians, a beautiful reading, written here, the mystery that has been revealed through the Spirit to his holy apostles and the fullness of time it's come to us. We know the mystery. Oh, it'll get worse in a minute. Eh? It'll get worse. <coughs> you know, Jesus, Mary explains to Jesus, four-year-old Jesus, what the myrrh is, what frankincense is, how one is different to the other. One is a little bit more expensive than the other. They are both very, very expensive. And Jesus says, where's the gold? <laughs> and Mary said, we spent that getting you out of Egypt. 